Wanda Harris with the Sheriff Office Records section, and this is Inside HCSO. Inside HCSO. Detectives make sure sexual predators and offenders will follow the law this Halloween. Too much time at the pump spelled big trouble for a gas thief. And the anticipation is over as the new Freddie Solomon Boys and Girls Club at New Seal Park opens its doors. Hello and a warm welcome. I'm Captain Chad Cronister and you are watching Inside HCSO, the official webcast of the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. Take a few minutes and check out news and information you will only find here. Now let's go inside HCSO. Master Deputy Tom Chavez was in the right place at the right time when a Kia van with a homemade spare gas tank pulled up to the pumps. And with the help of Master Deputy Bo Dobson, this gas hog didn't get away with the goods. I was sitting inside of the, or sitting in the uh, parking lot of Sam's Club in Brandon and I happened to look up at the pump and I saw this uh, blue minivan there. The blue minivan, I noticed uh, after a while, it had been there probably close to about 20 minutes. Um, every so often I would look up and I noticed that they did at least two transactions that the person did at the pump. When the person got back in, started to drive away, I could see that the vehicle was uh, very heavy, uh, pulled away very sluggish. Uh, I think it's gonna be approximately 150 gallons right now. The tank is probably about 200 gallons. This gas tank seems to be custom made just for this van. You have a small uh, tube here to run the gas into it. It's been outfitted with an, a second uh, tube here to pump the gas into right next to the regular gas tank. You've got a uh, fuel pump here for offloading fuel. And it even comes with the nozzle. Uh, when he was arrested, he found to have a uh, uh, pocket full of Walmart gift cards. Um, upon searching him, incident to arrest for the unlawful conveyance of fuel, they found some uh, more Walmart credit cards in between the front driver's seat and um, passenger seat within arm's reach. He's local. He's got a Florida driver's license out of Hialeah, and, um, but he said that he lives locally. He didn't know his exact address, and he claims that he borrowed this car. We take special pride in helping a neighborhood rid itself of thugs and drugs. That's just what our District 2 Street Crime Squad accomplished with a pair of raids in Claremel. Um, recently, over the uh, past couple months, we've been out here in Claremel, Palm River area. Um, out here, you can expect to find gangs, street-level narcotics, thieves, burglars, all those kind of bad people that we usually target, we want to target on a daily basis. Um, recently, we were involved in two search warrants that we uh, initiated just probably a mile away this way. We retrieved three firearms, um, drugs, stolen property. It was a stolen moped that we found at one house, um, two handguns, along with some crack cocaine. One of the houses where um, the firearms, two firearms were located, the suspect we arrested was a convicted felon. He's been arrested multiple times for trafficking in cocaine, um, felon in possession of firearm charges, probation. So it was good to get that you know, type of arrest you know, back there in that neighborhood. Um, it shows that, you know, the bad guys that like to live in the dead-end cul-de-sacs of Claremel and Fish Lake, um, they aren't untouchable just because they live at the, the cul-de-sac. Part of our job as a street crimes unit is to delve into these hot spots, these crime hot spots, and help protect the citizens that are good people and who want to take care of the community and take pride in their community. Um, we try to help mitigate the uh, illegal narcotics and and gangs and crimes that occur within their neighborhood and so I think that they appreciate it at least I hope that they do um, we, we do our best they came in and did a job very quick and very thorough and we appreciate that very much we need more people to join forces with us I know some people are scared but it doesn't take a lot of work you know just a lot of um, you know watching and documentation and that that part they can do and let the sheriff do their part and it'll get done. 
Our deputies and detectives are paying special attention to hundreds of sexual predators and offenders in our county with Halloween coming up. Our Operation No Tricks makes sure these felons don't try any tricks on that special night for our children. FDLE uh, has them in certain different tiers. So if they're in a tier being a, a predator and it, being a predator on probation or offender on probation with DOC means that they have certain sanctions that they have to abide by. And those sanctions are no Halloween decorations, no handing out candy, no mask or any type of costume. The reason for this is because they want to ensure that these sexual predators and offenders are not harming anyone on this, the only day that we send children door to door uh, without any type of uh, parental control usually. So it's an issue and we want to make sure that all of our children in Hillsborough County are safe. So we go out and we make sure that those individuals that are not on probation still know that we would appreciate, even though they, they're not lawfully uh, bound to it, that they, we appreciate if they wouldn't do any of those things. How you doing, Daniel? How you doing, sir? Detective Newman, Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. I'm by to check on you, make sure you're following all the rules and sanctions that are set forth. Are you familiar with uh, what you're allowed to do and not allowed to do regarding yes, Halloween? Yes, sir. No decorations, no handing out candy, no dressing in costume, things of that nature. You're familiar with that, correct? Yes, sir. All right, sir. Yeah, we're just out here doing sexual offender checks on all of our offenders and predators and letting them know what the, their sexual sanctions are for uh, you know, the holiday coming up, Halloween, making sure that they're not you know, wearing any costumes, they're not giving out Halloween candy, candy and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So that's basically what we're doing in the area. Yeah. A lot of times the, these people, they have jobs, they uh, try and uh, make a living even though right. the, they have to struggle with uh, finding work. But uh, we have to go out a number of times to different addresses because uh, there's no set time that they have to be home. And so sometimes it takes a few visits at each residence to catch them at home. So far we've not had anyone that, uh, of our predators or offenders that have uh, not done what we've asked them to do. Take a look at this surveillance video. The suspect obviously has a hankering to break into convenience stores. There are five burglaries connected to this one thief. All of the stores have been in the town and country area. The thief likes to hurl a rock or brick or some other large object through the glass door or window. Once inside, the hooded bandit proceeds to smash open the cash registers, and he just can't seem to break another bad habit. Before he leaves, he swipes packs of cigarettes. Give us a name, and we'll take it from there. We need some help to put a killer behind bars. Take a look at this unsolved homicide and share any information you have with a call text or email. On November 12, 2008, at approximately 12.35 a.m., the victim, Darrell Vance, was standing near the mailboxes within the Royal Park Apartments on Bonaire Drive in Tampa, Florida, attempting to buy crack cocaine. The victim suffered from addiction. A resident walking along the sidewalk near the mailboxes found Vance dead. He had been shot multiple times. The resident immediately contacted 911, and subsequently deputies and EMS personnel responded declaring the victim dead at the scene. The ensuing investigation revealed residential witnesses reporting hearing multiple gunshots and then seeing the possible suspects fleeing west toward a fence that parallels 56th Street. The suspects were described as black males with medium build and short hair. If you have any information regarding this unsolved homicide, please contact the Homicide Section Cold Case Unit. I'm Master Detective Greg Thomas, Homicide Section Cold Case Unit. Help us solve this homicide and bring closure to the family. Sheriff David G's Sporting Clay shoot for charity was another huge success. Take a look. So we're here today at Sheriff David G's Sporting Clays event, which benefits the USO of Tampa Bay and the Jason Ackerman Foundation. The sheriff's very excited at the support that has occurred today um, to help these two great organizations. Both are grassroots efforts here in the Tampa Bay community. One, the USO supporting military uh, organizations and personnel, and of course the Jason Ackerman Foundation focused on uh, youth programs. 
As a USO Chartered Center, we rely 100% on the donations of our seven county areas. So it's organizations like, like this, the Sheriff G's Sporting Place Tournament, that absolutely help us do what we do for our military locally. We have shooters from every age category, from youth shooters to um, senior shooters. We've got former and present law enforcement officers. We've got retired and active duty military out here, um, ladies shooters. So we really got the full spectrum um, out here on the course today. As you can hear behind us, we still have shooters on the course. A lot of them have come in, turned in their scorecards, and are having a great lunch in anticipation of their score sheets uh, coming out. And of course, great raffle prizes to end out the day. With a snip of the ribbon, the Freddie Solomon Boys and Girls Club at Nucio Park opens its doors to the community. Here's more. Let me tell you, it's great to be a sheriff in an agency where we, we haven't bit, built a jail during my administration, but we've built three boys and girls clubs. So let me tell you. As I reflect on everything that has happened in the last nine months, I am so happy to be here today <clears throat> to introduce to you our baby, the new Freddie Solomon Boys and Girls Club at Nucio Park. Today, I want to thank you all who saw this vision and helped to make it a reality. And as we begin this venture together, one of Freddie's favorite sayings will come to life. There is much more work to be done. I am certain that together we will make this Boys and Girls Club something we can cherish for many, many years to come. Oh my. Uh... Dee and, and, and myself and the Boys and Girls Club staff and the Hillsborough County Sheriffs have uh, worked hard over the last year to get us to this point and uh, what, an, uh, what a fun point to be at. But I can't thank you enough, Sheriff G, for the confidence that you've had in the Boys and Girls Club over the last couple dozen years with your support in Brandon and Riverview and now the Freddie Solomon Boys and Girls Club at Nucio Park means a lot to us and it's going to mean a lot to the kids in this particular community. The 2013 Ranch Run is just around the bend. Join us on October 26th at Temple Terrace Elementary School. We have 5K, 10K and even 15K races. The event benefits the Florida Sheriff's Youth Ranches where wayward youth are guided down a path to adulthood. Grab your clubs and help some kids at the same time. This is the 11th year of our charity golf tournament and it will benefit the new Freddie Solomon Boys and Girls Club at Nucio Park. Always a great time with great prizes and great friends. The tournament is set for November 1st at Pebble Creek Golf Club in North Tampa. Tea time is 10 a.m. sharp. For more information, visit our website or to register online, go to www.marketplace.hcsocharities.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Inside HCSO. Sheriff David G. and the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office is proud to showcase some of the great work we do every day. We really appreciate your interest and support. All Hallows' Eve is creeping our way again. Take special care with children when they are out and about looking for that tree. Need some safety suggestions? Just check out our website for ways to make it a safe Halloween. Until next time, stay safe, Hillsborough County.